right. Yeah. Council, we kick off our discussion uh, this evening by touching on the president's uh, speech at the recent um, uh, b press briefing that he had uh, at State House. Let us get your overview of uh, the presidential address. Well, it was an interesting address in that um, the expectations before the address by the Zambian people, mm -hmm. including myself, or maybe let me speak for myself, were very high. I thought he would inspire hope uh, of better things to come. I thought he was going to address the issues of the economy and most of the niggling issues in this country in a manner that would inspire hope to say that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. But alas, what he discussed and what he said did not really give a signal of light at the end of the tunnel. And if at all there was any semblance of light at the end of the tunnel, it is probably a, an oncoming train that's in the tunnel mm -hmm. that's coming to bash all of us. Uh, he dealt with the issue of the economy as a last thing without necessarily giving uh, the Zambian people a hope that the economy would improve or would get better. Because from the time uh, the UPND came into government, the economy of Zambia has only gotten worse. Uh, the, the, the happenings have suggested that uh, there is nothing that he is able to do. There is no plan that he possibly had that would lead us into the paradise that was promised to the Zambian people. With the slogan that Bali will fix it, that has not happened. There's nothing that he has uh, fixed in terms of the economy except fixing individuals mm -hmm. in, the in the name of the fight against corruption. I say this because uh, if you notice the moment they came in, the moment he came in, to start with the leadership issue, he said was going to be very methodical. The kind of leadership that he was going to choose is going to be the kind that would inspire hope in the lives of the people. That was not to happen. The, the ministers he appointed, uh, the, 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 the changes that were made, all that did not inspire much hope. And it has been uh, like that over time. And uh, I'll give you a very, a very, a very good example as regards food security uh, as a nation. It's a very important angle. It's a very important aspect of the economy to ensure that the Zambians are eating at any given time. They have access to food, and that food must be affordable. Even for, uh, uh, for, for, for the poorest of the families, they must be able to access uh, that food. Mm -hmm. the, at the time uh, UPND was coming in, there was about 1.5 million uh, metric tons of maize that was in our reserves. Uh, we saw how that uh, the Minister of Agriculture um, Mr. Mutolo said they were going to sell that maize because they had more than enough maize that would last us for a very long time. What did they do? They sold. We had uh, the minister Ambros Lufuma coming and telling us we have already received money from the Congo and uh, we, are, we are selling uh, this off. And they did sell. Just three days ago there was uh, something in the news to say that we have a shortage of 1.3 million metric tons of maize for us to be said to be food secure. Now that 1.3 metric tons of maize is less than what they found, meaning that if they hadn't sold, we would have had 1.3 metric tons of maize to take care of uh, people and to take care of the hunger situation in the country. We wouldn't have to go with a begging bowl to people, for them to help us. We wouldn't have had to declare hunger a disaster in this nation. In fact, we would have had a surplus of 200,000 metric tons of maize. Mm -hmm. What did we do? We sold all that. And what are we doing now? We are gone with a begging board to say, come and help us. Over and above that, we have even borrowed much more. The president, during his uh, address, uh, said in an excited manner that we have engaged the IMF. From the $1.3 billion that we are supposed to borrow, we've asked them to increase it to $1.7 billion. And they called that good leadership because we are borrowing $400, uh, $400 million much more. Now, that is uh, lack of vision, lack of foresight, and not taking into account what has been dealt with. This government has been reckless in the manner 
that the, the, the expending resources. Reckless because it is very clear that certain things or bringing the economy back to its feet is none of their, of their priorities. What they've prioritized is what seems to be good for them to sustain themselves in power. They've got reckless expenditures on uh, uh, things like handing over civil servants to PSMD. Over 400 people have been handed over to PSMD. They have been asked to stay home and their positions have been taken over by other people. Meaning that you are paying two people for the same position. Those that are acting in those positions are being paid an acting allowance. Because they have moved from another position to that position where one has been sent home, those vacancies have had to be filled as well, meaning that people are moving up, being paid acting allowances. Those who are home being paid acting allowances, which is a worthless, useless expenditure, all in the name of fixing people. The, the, the president also addressed an issue uh, that was, was quite interesting, saying that he's setting up a commission of inquiry to address the issue of gassing so that uh, we, we find out what exactly happened as regards the issue of gassing. How does that help in his agenda to improve the economy? How does that help in his agenda for the rule of law? Because not so long ago, this government said uh, Dr. Zumani, the former advisor to the president for politics, and three others were responsible for gassing. They took them to court. They were prosecuted and acquitted. As far as they were concerned, those were the ones that were gassing people. And this time around, they want an inquiry to inquire into the gassing. Of all things, is that really priority? Mm -hmm. Is that what we should be focusing on? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be focusing on dealing with what everybody is talking about at their kitchen tables? The issue that you raise, uh, Council, uh, uh, with regards to uh, the gassing issue, uh, this, is an, this is an issue that has really been on a lot of uh, Zambia's mouths and, you know, asking questions as to who was behind the gassing. Don't you think maybe this is why the president brought it up during his address? Priorities. Priorities are very important. What I thought he would be talking about, and I would want you to you to 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 come along with me. There is this issue that he thought is priority of gassing, but he also talks about the issue of tribalism. He talks about tribalism in the sense that uh, cabinet sat and they are looking at enhancing the punishment as regards those people that are tribal. Now what? I would want the president to do what every Zambian would want the president to do is that set up a commission of inquiry to deal with this issue of tribalism because there's this perception that from the time the UPND government came in, they have sidelined certain tribes in preference for other tribes. That perception is everywhere. This is what everybody talks about at their kitchen tables. The perception that the certain group of people, uh, the Zambezi region, are being favored uh, uh, much to the uh, disadvantage of other people that belong to other uh, uh, parts of the country. It is not a, a discussion that should uh, culminate into those that are condemning tribalism being perceived to be tribal, but we need a commission of inquiry to be able to sit down and say what has happened over the three years of UPND being in government. Yeah. President Haka Chilema is being accused of being tribal. It is for him to be able to set up that commission of inquiry, to, to, to look at what appointments he has made over the, the last three years. Those that have been surrendered to cabinet, the 400, to which grouping do they belong to? Those that have replaced those that have been surrendered to, cover, uh, to, 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 to cabinet, to which group do they belong to? Does it give a perception of, uh, of tribalism? Does it give a perception of nepotism? Does it give a perception that certain people are being favored in relation to others? That is something that he needs to do so that these fears, these, uh, this talk, these things that people only talk about at their kitchen tables is really dealt with. But he's not looking at it in that manner. Every person who condemns 
any form of tribalism is said to be tribal. Now, I have uh, said time and again to say, there's a difference between tribal and talking about tribalism. There is nothing wrong with talking about tribalism. There's everything wrong with being tribal. With the perception that is there, that shows that there is a practice of tribalism, you can't say that people should not talk about it and that every person who talks about it should be sanctioned as though they are the persons who are being tribal. That should not be the case. What we should be looking at is how do we enhance national unity? Are there any things that suggest that there is tribalism? Our constitution, our very own constitution, which he has sworn to uphold, says there must be a balance in the appointments in terms of regional representation, in terms of gender, in terms of inclusion of even persons with disabilities. Are we following that? So if we are going to get the constitution and follow it and measure what the UPND has been doing against what the constitution says, they are falling short of the glory of the constitution. And it is this discussion that we should be having about, uh, we should be having and saying, how do we improve uh, the, 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 the perception of Zambia being one Zambia and one nation? So you are telling yes. us that the point means that the, 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 the head of state has made do not have any balance? There is no balance whatsoever. Every person who looks at certain appointments would, uh, would agree the, 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 the tilt has been to one side and not inclusive of the other. And this is a discussion that should be had openly. This is a discussion that people should be allowed to express themselves. This is something that he ought to appoint a commission of inquiry to say, let us look at how best we can go back to that motto which our founding father, mm -hmm. uh, Kenneth Kaunda, coined to say we must be one Zambia and one nation. Are we living by the dictates of this uh, motto that, uh, that we have given ourselves? Or is, are we paying lip service to it in the mm -hmm. manner that President Haka Indechilema pays lip service to a lot of things and does little or nothing uh, to follow up on what he says? Mm -hmm. And one of those things is even the issue of the, the rule of law. How that he says he wants the rule of law to be observed. How that when people are arrested, uh, they should be given bond uh, there and then. And how that uh, investigations should proceed and, and arrest. This time around, people arrest, then they investigate. You have people that are staying in custody for 10 days, 8 days, for a very long period of time before they're even charged. Mm -hmm. Even when they're charged, they're not even taken to court. Because uh, the, 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 the police and the investigative agencies have chosen their own path. And mostly this comes from even reckless pronouncements by the, by the president where he tries people in public. He goes uh, on a public forum, condemns certain people, says this person has done that. And a typical example that I would give is that of uh, JJ. Mm -hmm. The whole lot of a president. This is an MP who has been abducted. Having been abducted, the country is curious and are waiting to hear from the president. What is it that has happened to this gentleman called JJ, who is a member of parliament? Everybody is interested. The diplomats are interested. The, Zamb the ordinary Zambians are interested. Because if such a thing happens to a diplomat, uh, to, to a person like a, a, a member of parliament. It could happen to a judge, it could happen to any person, it could happen to a diplomat. And everybody is asking the questions, are we safe and secure? What is being done? I thought the president at that briefing would say, listen, we sympathize with uh, Honorable J.J. Uh, Banda, and we are looking into this issue. We are investigating to get to the very root of this, uh, of this issue because we want our members of parliament to be safe. We want our citizens to be safe. We want every person who visits Zambia to be safe. And thus, this matter is being investigated. What does he do? He says, well, there is that thug who went and attacked the police. I want that matter taken up. I want that matter reopened. And he, shows, he showed us that he was not even aware of what was happening. He's not aware of what's going on in his country, which he's, uh, he's watching over. We have given him the power to be able to, to, to handle the affairs of this country. He refers to a matter at the police station where it wasn't even JJ that assaulted a police officer. The person who assaulted a police officer was someone else. And that person was prosecuted. 
and sentenced to a year imprisonment. JJ, having been in that group, was charged with misconduct at a police station and they were fined. And that matter was closed. And the principle of law is that if a person has been acquitted or convicted, you can't retry that person again. But here is a president who says, I want that matter retried. Now, if you are going to look at what exactly happened to JJ, you see that he is abducted, he is found, taken to the hospital. Uh, his family takes him to Medland Hospital. Mm -hmm. What happens? The police come and forcibly take him out of the hospital against his wish, against the wish of the, of the family. Should that be a practice? Is that lawful? Of course that is unlawful. Uh, Council, there are sessions that um, Honorable Jay Banda's case, uh, in which he was allegedly abducted, is just something that was, uh, you know, self-planned. Could it be? Could it be the reason that the president maybe really didn't pay much attention to to, to his issue? Listen, the the president at this at that particular stage, at least, could not have come to a conclusion that it was self-planned. He couldn't have come to that conclusion because, as at that point. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel J. Banda had been interviewed. Having been interviewed, he had given the police a lead as to who exactly was responsible. If Mr. J. Banda had mentioned any other person who is not part of his establishment, those other persons would have been called in for questioning. Now, the nature of the investigation as regards Honorable Emmanuel J. Banda is not one that is intended to find who abducted him. It is one that is, uh, has been constructed or has been made to be an investigation to exonerate those that he named had abducted him. That is, should not be the focus of the, of, the, of the investigation. The issue is how can we be safe again? Who abducted Jay Panda? And this, the person who can tell us, who can authoritatively tell us what exactly happened is the person who was involved in that situation. In, the, in this particular case, this person names the people that were involved in that situation and we spend the whole time trying to exonerate those that have been named. And that is exactly what the president was doing. It's like give a dog a bad name and kill it. That's exactly what he's trying to do, to try and tarnish the image of Mr. J. Banda so that he is not believed by the public should he say anything? And at that particular point, mind you, uh, Mr. J. Banda had already spoken to the police. And this is a time where he is admitted in hospital. The police come and take him out of the hospital the moment he's discharged. They take him for, quest uh, for questioning. He explains to them what exactly happened. And they don't let him go home. What do they do? They take him to Kawata Hospital, uh, to Kawata police, uh, police Station. They put him in custody. Even when they are putting him in custody, they are not indicating what offense they have put him in custody for. Because this is a person who had recently been abducted. This person is brought for questioning as regards what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. This person names the people that, were, that abducted him. And from there, they take him to a police cell. In that police cell, he gets sick, and then they take him to the hospital. So as things stand, he's in police custody. He's in police custody for what? Nobody knows. But the police but the uh, issue dispelled is those allegations saying that they did not arrest Honorable Jebanda at any point. Uh, I, I did not say they arrested him. Mm. I said they put him in their custody. Mm. He's in detention as we speak. Mm. He's been detained. For what purpose? Should, shouldn't they disclose to the public for what purpose that he's been put there? You see that the first statement that was uh, given by the minister, uh, Jack Mwimbu, he goes and says, uh, we have taken Jay Banda to Minasoko Hospital. He's been assessed and he has no physical injuries. The next thing, the, su the, the superintendent uh, at Minasoko uh, the, uh, Hospital, the person in charge of Minasoko Hospital, addresses the media and says, this person has been found with visible injuries on his body. Something that is contrary to what... Uh, what the minister uh, said. Mm -hmm. And we expected that the minister would be telling the Zambians the truth. What is it that he was trying to hide? The next thing we see Ambrose Lufuma speaking and saying that uh, we are investigating and uh, Mr. J. Banda was asked and we're dealing with an issue that uh, happened in 2016. 
uh, the, uh, to Honorable Jay Banda. He committed an offense in 2016, a matter which we are investigating. Now, 2016 to this time around, how many years have passed? That is 10 years. So this administration has come to deal with an issue that happened 10 years ago, and they are bringing it now. That should not be the concentration. The issue is this person has been abducted. Tell us what happened to this person who has been abducted. Don't tell us about something that happened uh, 16 years ago, or rather 10 years ago. And if he was uh, careful to find out what exactly happened, having been uh, uh, acting Minister of Home Affairs, he should have known that the issue that happened in 2016 is a matter that went to court and was closed a matter where uh, appropriate sentences were given, and it was for the state to appeal at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So matters that go to court, you in, in a criminal matter, for example, where you are convicted uh, or acquitted, the state or indeed the person who's been convicted or in the event that the state loses, they're given 30 days in which to appeal. Within that 30 days, they ought to appeal. Within that particular period, uh, if at all there is need for a review, a judge can call for the review of that particular uh, 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 case. Now, it has been 10 years. Mm -hmm. What is it that they are trying to hide? It is clear that there is something that this administration is trying to hide. In trying to resuscitate old cases, mm -hmm. when there is a pending issue that requires answers, and every Zambian is sitting back and saying, what happened? We want to know what exactly happened. Right. No answer has been given. Before Instead, all those that talked about mm -hmm. the issue of uh, Mr. J. Banda are already appearing in court now because they talked about it. Counsel, before um, Honorable J. Banda went missing, talking about uh, the case that happened in 2016, the journalist uh, in question also asked that that case should be revisited and reopened because he feels that uh, judgment was fairly passed. Is it possible that a case that was closed in 2016 can be reopened in 2024? See, every time there's a political interference in this established system, you get to have such voices coming out. Mm -hmm. Like I earlier said, in the event that any judgment is passed, there's a right to appeal. And that right to appeal can only be exercised within the provisions of the law of that right to appeal. Mm -hmm. And in criminal matters, it's 30 days in which to appeal. At that particular time, the state ought to have appealed against that particular judgment. The state never appealed that particular judgment. And remember, that's a criminal matter. It's not that particular journalist against uh, the person that may have perpetrated the offense. It's the people, the Zambians, the, the state that is complaining that this is what has happened and this is the offense that this person has committed. And that particular journalist comes in as a witness. Now, if this person comes in as a witness, the person that determines the appropriate sentence is a magistrate or a judge in that particular case. And in this particular case, it was a magistrate who made that decision. Should the state have been dissatisfied with that particular uh, judgment, it should be for the state to appeal mm -hmm. to the High Court. If, uh, if that all the, any party was going to be satisfied, dissatisfied with the judgment of the High Court, they were going to appeal to the Supreme Court. And it was going to go in that particular manner because at that particular time we didn't have the court of appeal. So this is something that should have followed that particular process. It's not a matter for media frenzy and saying, I have taken a letter to the Chief Justice. The Chief Justice will simply read that letter and if he's uh, kind enough, may respond to the effect that, I'm sorry, this matter can be dealt with in accordance with the law because the, provi the provision of the law is that it can only be dealt in this manner by way of appeal. That's how you challenge decisions of the court. Mm -hmm. You don't challenge decisions of the court administratively. You challenge uh, decisions of the court by the judicial process that has been set up uh, and it's a systematic way that must, must be followed. Right. Now, still speaking about uh, the presidential address uh, council, obviously there's been a lot of political tension currently in the country and don't you think maybe this is what prom prompted uh, the president to uh, have the particular press briefing to address a, sh a few issues uh, that you know were bringing about tension in the country okay now if you say there's political tension in this country you are very right but who's responsible for this political tension we had the ig 
the Inspector General of Police, saying that the opposition are not being allowed to have the political rallies because the other side is ready to attack them. The UPND is ready to attack the opposition in the event that they should ha they have their political rallies. Meaning that we have identified the aggressor. We have identified the person or the person, the party who is wrong. And this particular case, it is the UPND. The UPND, a party over which President Haka Indechilema superintends. And therefore, the Inspector General of Police is saying that the party which the President Haka Indechilema superintends of, over intends to attack the opposition. Now, the issue here is a question of leadership. It means that President Haka Indechilema has failed to exercise leadership over his party because his party is ready to attack the opposition and clearly the last few weeks or indeed few days have shown that they have that propensity to attack look at what happened at uh, ridgeway when the first uh, the former first lady was appearing before deck it was the upnd cadres that were marching the street insulting and threatening violence to each and every person that they came across who seemed to be a sympathizer to uh, to uh, to the former first lady. Look at what happened in Baolini. When they went amok, breaking cars, uh, going to shops, looting and stealing, breaking diploma, uh, vehicles that belong to diplomats, possibly that is what prompted uh, President Haka Inde Ichilema to go and address the issue because now there have been diplomats that have been affected. A motor vehicle that uh, belonged to the European Union had been, uh, had been broken by his cadres. And, and members of the UPND feel that this political tension in the country has been brought about uh, by the opposition. You, you see, that is uh, where the problem is because President Haka Inde Ichilema himself alludes to it to say the moment the, the uh, President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu came out, then the issue of uh, violence has come up. But who is being violent in this, in this particular case? It is his cadres, it is his people that are being violent in this particular case. Why shouldn't the former president move? Why shouldn't the former president go to church? Why shouldn't the former president mm -hmm. uh, uh, be, be, be allowed to sympathize with, uh, with people that have been incarcerated? He can't even go to a market. He can't go to a police station. He can't uh, exercise his right even to jog, to move. That has been problematic for, for for, for this administration, they should possibly tell us what rights doesn't he have which an ordinary person ought to have. In one moment, they say he's an ordinary pe uh, uh, person. In the next, he says a person of his stature or should not be looking at things or should not be uh, dealing with things in the manner that he dealt with. Look, the, the, the former president went to Kabwe. He goes there mm -hmm. to see a bishop. A police officer uh, gets into the office and says, you can't be here. You should not be having a meeting here. What law was being applied at that particular time? What law says a former president can't go and see a bishop? What law says every meeting, private or otherwise, should uh, requires that the pol he should get permission from the police? That 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 was very preposterous. And in that particular vein, you had different statements uh, coming from. From, from the spokesperson of the government, coming from the party, and that seems to suggest that they do not want President uh, Edgar Lungu to be moving around. And that is why uh, when the, uh, for the former president had that briefing, was saying that it appears as though I am under house arrest. And ask questions, am I under house arrest? They should let me know because I can't go anywhere. I can't uh, go to church. I can't mingle. I can't move. I can't speak. What is it that I should be doing in this particular case? In terms of security, in one breath they are saying that you are not entitled to security because you have gotten back into politics. In the next they are saying, no, 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 no. He requires security because he's not an ordinary person. Quite preposterous positions that... Uh, that uh, this government has had as regards the former president. So it is not the opposition that is causing tension in the country. It is the misrule of President Haka Inde Chilema and his party that is causing tension in the country. And that should not be the case. That is something that we need to guard against. That is something that we need to speak
speak out against. But unfortunately, these discussions have been relegated to kitchen tables. Everybody is afraid to talk about it because the moment they talk about it, they are seen to be um, seditious in the manner that they are approaching things. And now we have a very common offenses such as seditious practices, espionage, because you hold an opinion that this government does not agree with. They would want opinions that everybody else agrees with. Not agreeing with my opinion does not mean that those are seditious practices. Right. Protect my right to say whatever I have to say. But within the limits of my freedoms, I should be uh, careful in the manner that I say what I say. But then again, this government is not necessarily uh, dealing with people because what they said was wrong, but because they do not agree with what has been said by a particular person, mm -hmm. and hence the uh, uh, offenses of espionage and seditious practices. Let us, let us talk about the, the, the conduct of the former head of state. Do you think he is conducting himself in a manner that deserves respect? What do you mean when you say that? Because uh, you must be able to point at a particular let conduct. Let us talk about uh, maybe his utterances, especially at, uh, at the Dunamis Church, uh, when, he, when they, they, they were invited for a church service. What did he utterances say? Utterances that made about 25 youths of the UPND open a docket, um, a docket at uh, Kawata Police Station and saying that uh, 25 dockets actually were opened for the, for the former head of state, uh, saying that he made a statement in which they feel that uh, the current head of state is not safe when he said that anything can happen before 2026. See, indeed anything can happen before 2026. Mm. Who has control over that? Who has control over what may or may not happen before 2026? And they still ask, is there anything and that anybody the, can the make former head of state particular. is planning against uh, the current head of state? As he said, he is a snake and the dove at the same time. <laughs> See, uh, when the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, it is very correct. Mm -hmm. And that misinterpretation of what he said is purely because of lack of knowledge. When the president quoted the scripture where God is saying, I have sent you as sheep amongst wolves. But be you as cunning as a snake and as humble as a dove. Mm -hmm. To say of oneself, of oneself to say, I can be as cunning as a snake, but yet as humble as a dove. This is what God requires all of us to be. There are going to be situations where you have to be as cunning as a, as a snake. There are going to be situations where you're going to be as humble as a dove. Figure of speech. That is what exactly he said. But what infuriated the other par, uh, side is that there could be early elections. These early elections could be prompted by the people in the manner that President uh, Kaunda was prompted to call for an early election. President Hakainde Hichilema did say when he featured on Radio Christian Voice, or at least one of the radio stations, when he said it is the people that would decide there could be an early election. He did not call for an early election in a manner that offends the Constitution. Because you can't say that there is Never be, there can never be a possibility of having an early election. For example, in the event that uh, Zambians decided to impeach this particular president, and possibly the, 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 the very fact that something that does not warrant the vice president, or indeed the vice president says, I'm not going to take up that particular position. It would mean that we would need to go to an early election. If President Hakainde Ichlema today admitted that he has failed to govern in the manner that he promised the people that he would, because he has not fulfilled any one of his promises, mm -hmm. and dissolves parliament, we would have an early election. Circumstances would, uh, would arise that would require an early election. And the challenge to President Hakainde Ichilema that, will, uh, that is constantly being given by the opposition is that you have felt we are at a worse off situation than we were before. 
the noble thing, the moral thing to do is to resign so that we give someone a fresh mandate. We give a different political party a fresh mandate to be able to take us either back to where we're coming from, where things were better, take us back to Egypt where we had uh, onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. And you have taken us to a land where now we are, we are, we are crying. And everything is worse than it was before. People want a better life. There's no one who is saying that things are okay. And what people expected from that briefing was an inspiration of hope in the lives of the people. Us Zambians are looking for hope. He said it was hope and help. He's far from it. Far from being help for the Zambian people. Far from being the hope of the Zambian people because things have only gotten worse. He did say to say, if you are going to doubt the issue of the inflation and check the dollar, check what the dollar uh, uh, is. And at that time, the dollar was at 17. Now it is at 27. What is he saying? The same thing that he said then should still apply. If the dollar is at 27%, it means that our inflation rate should be higher because the dollar responds to the inflation and not the other way around. But that has not uh, been the case. He has told Zambians to say we are in this particular situation because the Patriotic Front Party overborrowed. But they don't tell you what they mean by overborrowing. I can tell you for certain that the Patriotic Front Party, uh, in the 10 years that they were in government, borrowed about uh, nine. $9, million, $9 billion, about $9.8 billion to be exact, meaning that on average what was being borrowed was about a $1 billion every year if we're going to uh, spread it over the 10 years. In the last three years that we're not even at the three-year mark, the UPND has borrowed about $3 billion. Now, this $3 billion averages about a $1 billion a billion dollars every year, meaning that if they are going to continue on this trajectory, in the next five years, they will have borrowed about five billion dollars. Now, what the Patriotic Front government did with the 9.8 billion dollars can be seen. Look at the Kazungula Bridge. Look at the Kafue Lower Gorge. Look at the airports that have been built. Look at the, the bridges that have been established, the district hospitals, the mini hospitals, the, the main infrastructure, the roads, the, these flyover bridges, the, uh, the issue of uh, construction of roads uh, in Lusaka and in other places. All that is there to be seen. But what have they done with the $3 billion? The only thing that the president has pointed at are the toilets in Kwacha constituency. On the, uh, on the copper belt, a project that has been ongoing, by the way. And uh, what, what major thing can we point out to say from the $3 billion that they have borrowed, they, 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 they have done something that, that we can see? Right. Nothing. Still talking about the former head of state um, council, the, the president in his address talked about uh, the former head of state risking being arrested if he continued uh, breaking the law. Now, let us talk about the, the, the former head of state's immunity. From the time that uh, he announced his uh, return to active politics, does that mean that his immunity expires? First, let's deal with what the, what the president said, hmm. to say that the former president risks being arrested. Mm -hmm. Now, the former president is warning that, uh, or the, uh, rather the current president is warning the former president that he risks being arrested. What offense has he committed? If indeed, he, he's busy debating with himself over the issue of, 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 of immunity. It's irrelevant for him to, to debate with himself over the issue of the immunity. Because this person whom you are targeting, whom you are talking about, has come and is telling you, you are saying I stole when I was president. Mm. Lift the immunity, take me to court, let me have my day in court so I can explain myself. This person has already told you to say, it, that's a non-issue. The issue has got nothing to do with my immunity. If I have committed an offense against the Zambians, Take me to court. If now, worst as former president, he has committed an offense, the former president admits to say, I'm not above the law. If by what I said, if what I have said to say 
we, 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 we could have an, an early election is an offense. Take me to court. He has said that in no uncertain terms. We shouldn't even be dealing with this issue of the immunity. As though he has claimed to say, I am doing this because I am immune from prosecution. He acknowledges that he is not immune to prosecution. If for now the president is of the view that uh, uh, ACL has committed an offense, what is stopping him from uh, going ahead to arrest him? What is stopping him? He shouldn't make it seem as though there has been a, a, a position that uh, the former president has asserted to say, I am doing this wantonly because I am immune. He has said, I'm open to being investigated. I'm open to being prosecuted. But let me go, go through the rightful process. position of presidency. He should enjoy the rights that every Zambian enjoys. That is a discussion that should be had. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, the president should be concentrating on. It is his turn to govern. He has five years in which to govern. Let him make the most of it. Otherwise, his legacy would be that of purporting or pretending to be fighting corruption when his very government is, very, is corrupt itself. When he's ignoring the very corruption that is going on in his government. When he, as a person who's supposed to be the beacon of, uh, of transparency, has failed or refused to declare his assets, mm -hmm. how are we going to measure what he has gained during the time he was president uh, be, uh, with what he had before he was president? We are left to speculate as to what exactly is going on. For example, the FIC report says about $61 billion has been externalized. Mm -hmm. In what circumstances has that $61 billion been externalized? By the way, $61 billion, if we were to look at it and translate it to what it may be, uh, uh, or rather it's $61 billion kwacha, mm -hmm. if we were going to convert it and bring it to the, in dollar terms, it is about $2 billion. So out of the $3 billion that they have borrowed, $2 billion has been externalized in questionable circumstances. That is what the FIC report is mm -hmm. saying. Has he addressed that issue? So all these things are issues of concern that he should be dealing with and not the rhetoric that comprised his briefing. He had an opportunity to deal with issues of bread and butter, issues of the economy, issues of the rule of law mm -hmm. in a manner that would satisfy every Zambian and guarantee every Zambian that indeed we have a leadership that cares. But what we saw was a, an egoistic person who thinks that everything is about him. He's the law unto himself. He's a person who legislates, who comes up with a law. He's a person who determines who should be punished. He's a person who actually prosecutes whoever uh, he finds guilty at a public forum because he has been reckless with his mouth when it comes to dealing with uh, persons that he thinks have come in conflict with the law. When those people are supposed to be dealt with by the institutions of governance that we put in. It appears to me that the president, when he got uh, the instruments of power, thought that he could rule by decree. But he should know that we have our constitution that governs the manner in which he ought to govern. The executive should be separate. The judiciary should be separate. The legislature should be uh, separate mm. in that, and that there should be no interference with the work of the other amongst these institutions. Over and above that, we gave ourselves institutions of governance, such as the Anti-Corruption Commission, the Drug Enforcement Commission, the police who ordinarily ought to be independent, devoid of influence from the office of the president. We have the National Prosecutions Authority, the DPP, who should be devoid of influence from any person or authority, including the office of the president. But now we have a, a president who will go to parliament and say, we shall persecute and prosecute you. Functions that are not his. As a matter of fact, no function, no government entity or body or arm of government has a responsibility to persecute anyone. 
the, the only function that is there is to prosecute, and that is the function of the DPP, who should not be under the influence of any person. The investigations are supposed to be independent of the president. Now you have a president who directs which person should be investigated, mm -hmm. who directs which case should be reopened. That should not be open. That's recklessness, that's reckless leadership, and that's lawlessness. It should not be the case in a democracy. It is not something that is desirable in a democracy such as ours. All right. Let, let us quickly talk about uh, the conduct of the police um, council. Uh, lately, we've seen, you know, the police, uh, you know, refusing to, uh, to to allow uh, opposition political parties hold rallies. The recent case is that of the Socialist Party when they wanted to hold a, a, a rally on the Copper Belt. They were given access. They, they were given access, but later on, were not authorized to hold that particular rally. That's yet another very curious case, which uh, tells us how inept the police are, how inept the leadership that uh, President Hakari and Chilema superintends over is. No opposition party in the last three years has held a rally. No opposition party has been allowed to hold a rally. As regards the one that they first refused regards, uh, socialist, as regards the Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. Then less than 24 hours before the event, they said you can go ahead and have it. The morning of the event, uh, I think there was social media speculation that President Edgar Chagualungu would be the special guest at that rally. Mm -hmm. The police went on rampage, went and filled the grounds and said you are not allowed to hold a rally. We have changed our mind. And the, the, the reason that the IG has given is that UPND is ready to attack. So we will carry on with that as being the case in this particular case. Because the only threat that has been disclosed by the state, over the time they've said security concerns, security concerns, it has now been defined that the U UPND is a violent party that is ready to attack any opposition party that is going to hold a rally. Now, the people that are sitting back and discussing this at the kitchen tables because they are afraid to talk about it publicly for, peer, for fear of persecution and prosecution, as pronounced by the president, are doubting and saying, listen, this man promised that this would be a thing of the past. This is the person who said the Public Order Act would be respected. There is no single event relating to the opposition party that has been successfully held or there's been no implementation of the, um, of, 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 of the act, the Public Order Act, in relation to the opposition parties. Zero application of the, 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 the Public Order Act is, and, and that is the, the, the credential that he has so far as a president who has never allowed an opposition to hold a rally. That is, that, that is his credential. If you look at the other president, there is no president uh, from the time this country became a multi-party uh, system, uh, that is from 1991, that has gone for this long a period without an opposition party having a rally. He's the first. He likes saying that he's the first. Maybe you should admit that even in this particular case, he's the first to abrogate the provisions of the Public Order Act. Mm. Wantonly so, unlawfully so, in disregard of the rule of law, right. which he propagates or talks about way too much than he implements. Mm. The, 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 the banning of rallies, uh, is this a violation to the Constitution? It is a violation to the Constitution mm. because people have the uh, freedom to assemble they have the right to associate, and in the manner that they associate, the, the, the Public Order Act is intended to ensure that uh, the, 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 the persons that are going to assemble are orderly in the manner that they're going to hold the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular case, where the police are not able to provide that orderliness uh, that ought to be there, the persons that are having that meeting are asked to provide marshals that will superintend 
over that event to ensure that uh, the comfort everyone is, of everyone in that particular place is assured. But in this particular case, the villains have been the police and the UPND cadres. Mm -hmm. The police duty is to deter any wrongdoing. Their target is not the law-abiding citizens. Their target is those that are not law-abiding. The police cannot come to us and say, don't go for work because there are reckless drivers on the road. There are drunk drivers on the road. Let the drunk drivers just be driving around. You stay home because they may kill you. That is not what they should be doing. That is not what they should be doing. They can't tell us, don't buy property in your house because thieves will come and steal. My role is to buy a TV in my house. Their role is to protect me from thieves stealing my TV. But in this particular case, they are saying, no, don't assemble, don't exercise your rights because there's someone who is ready to infringe on your rights. That is what we have been told by this IG that we have. Right. Earlier this year, um, Council, we heard from the, the, the IG that uh, opposition, there was a pronouncement that the opposition will not be allowed to hold any rallies. And we saw a few months down the line, uh, but firstly, the Patriotic Front wanted to hold a rally in Mandevo. And we've seen from the United Quarter Alliance as well, the New Heritage Party and the Socialist Party as well. Can we say that, um, you know, the opposition is trying to push its luck? See, it's not luck. The opposition has every right to hold the rally. Mm. It is not a favor that the police are doing to the opposition parties. It is their right. They should enjoy that right. They should exercise that right. Mm. And the police should descend upon each and every person that seeks to infringe on this right. Their target is the person that is trying to infringe on this right to associate, this right to express themselves. Now, it is in this particular case, they've identified the person who is trying to infringe on this right. Mm -hmm. And that person is in the name of the UPND party, the cadres, who are superintended over by the president, who has sworn to uphold the constitution. And the constitution that he has sworn to uphold says, every Zambian has a right to associate. Every Zambian has the right to express themselves in any manner that they, they wish, provided they are not breaking the law. But this right has not been allowed to be exercised. Meaning that it is the IG, it is the UPND, it is the president that are infringing on the, right of the, uh, the rights of the opposition parties. And this is a matter that should really draw the attention of... Uh, our, our cooperating partners. It's a matter that should draw the attention of international organizations. And so far, the, 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 the outlook in terms of uh, the democratic space in, uh, in Zambia is very gloomy. It's very, it's very, very gloomy. There's nothing that the government can say to say, we upheld the rights of the people. Look at what we did as regards this. Detentions are way too long. Opposite from what the president says. And the president was candid enough at some point to admit that whatever I say is not being followed. It is not being followed by the people that you appointed. What does that make of you? It means you are not in charge. Mm. It's other people who are in charge. It means you've lost it. And you should, you should not be there. You should not have been trusted with that power in the first place because you have failed to control. And that is an unfortunate position that we find ourselves in as a country. Let me let me pick on the uh, recent uh, occurrence uh, that of uh, the New Heritage Party um, just uh, last week, uh, just the other weekend when they wanted to hold a rally at uh, Mandevo in Mandevo at Chipata grounds, and uh, the issue that uh, came up, uh, the police couldn't, you know, allow. Um, the, the New Heritage Party to go ahead and hold the rally, citing security concerns. And this is the same um, reason that they gave for, to, to the Socialist Party as to why they can't hold uh, the, their rally. Um, 
in many cases, we've seen that uh, the police have s uh, told uh, the opposition not to hold a rally, but then we saw we, we see a number of police officers at uh, the said venues where they're supposed to hold rallies. That's exactly what I've been talking about, to say they amass so many police officers to infringe on people's rights, mm -hmm. and they fail to amass the number of police officers to protect people's rights. That's recklessness. That's failure of governance, and that is failure of leadership, mm -hmm. and that calls for the people to say, we, this is not what we ask for. Give us what we ask for. You are behaving worse than what we expected from you. What you said was merely lip service. What you're doing is worse than what we thought we were experiencing. In this particular case, the person that ought to be indicted is the president. There's been a failure of leadership on his part. Another reason for, for, for the new Heritage Party was that uh, they needed to produce uh, documentation to show that the party is actually registered. That's preposterous. That's, that's preposterous because the police itself fall under the Ministry of Home Affairs. They're the ones, <laughs> uh, they're in the same ministry that registers parties. And if they're the ones that register parties, they have all that information. Mm -hmm. And it will, be, it will be insane of the Heritage Party. Who doesn't know about the registration status of the Heritage Party in Zambia? Everybody knows about that registration. It is that political interference that has been persistent and consistent throughout the term, uh, this, uh, the term of this particular government, where they have used every excuse in the book, albeit unlawful, to stop people from exercising their rights as guaranteed by the Constitution. It is an unfortunate time mm -hmm. to be in Zambia. It is an unfortunate time to be a politician in Zambia because you are not allowed to sell your ideas. I keep saying that uh, democracy is a marketplace of ideas. Allow people to listen to different ideas that different political parties have so that they are able to exercise a self-oriented decision, a, an informed decision as regards who they want uh, to be their leader. Now, he has stopped all the other political parties from exercising that uh, 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 that, 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 that freedom and now the only person that he is being compared to is the former president, President Edgar Chagualungu. People are saying, okay, we, you're not allowing us to listen to all these people. Now the only choice that we have is between you and President Edgar Chagualungu. And because of that, the president is seemingly not sleeping because of President Edgar Chagualungu, because he has allowed this situation. He has allowed a situation where the only person he's being compared to is the former president, who, in the minds of the people, did better than him. Because in the, in the, in, in the government of President Edgar Chagualungu, and uh, 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 if something costed uh, one dollar, and they were buying that at 17 kwacha, now the same item mm -hmm. costing the same one dollar they are buying it at 27 kwacha, meaning that they are paying 10 kwacha more under President Haka in the And they are saying, why don't we go back to where we used to be, where we were paying 10 kwacha less, would have saved the 10 kwacha. He has created this situation, mm -hmm. and he only has himself to blame for the popularity that President Edgar Chagualungu is enjoying right now, because his abysmal failure has shown that President Edgar Chagualungu was a better leader, was a better manager of the economy. Zambians said, let's try this economist mm -hmm. who has propagated and given us all these economic theories. Let's see him put them into practice. What does he do? He comes and propagates those uh, theories and says, no, the cause of the hunger situation in this country is because of exogenous circumstances. Uh, circumstances from outside are the ones that have caused this and not... Uh, uh, issues from inside. He's forgetting that it is his reckless government that sought the 1.5 million metric tons of maize, which if, had, if, if that had been preserved, would have uh, saved the situation, would not be talking about hunger, would be concentrating on other things. Mm -hmm. They would not be borrowing $400 million more 
to cushion the drought situation. And uh, talking about $400 million, now here's uh, the issue that we, we, we need to look at. If we had kept that 1.5 million metric tons of maize, mm -hmm. let me underplay it for purposes of uh, mathematics. Let's just say if we had 1 million metric tons of maize. And to have that 1 million metric tons of maize, suppose it costed us about a dollar for every metric ton of maize, which would have been about 17 kwacha then, during the time President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu was in government. For that particular 1 million metric tons of maize, uh, and we, we, were spent, we were to spend $1 million, in kwacha terms, that would be about uh, 17 million kwacha, now that they sold that 1 million metric tons of maize, if we are going to buy the same 1 million metric tons of maize to feed our population, mm -hmm. it means that we are going to be paying about, uh, that, uh, the, the dollar is now at 27, mm -hmm. 27 million kwacha. Meaning that we are paying 10 million kwacha more because of a reckless decision to sell what we had what we had cheaply. So who, manage, who is managing the economy better? The one who sought to save, uh, to, to save for a rainy day and the one who sold everything that was there without thinking of a rainy day and now has to pay much more, now has to buy back what they sold and has to go further to buy much more expensive uh, uh, maize for purposes of feeding the population. You will see that the, the economist has failed to apply the economic fundamentals that he said would apply. And yet this lawyer, the person that they said was a drunk, managed to uh, manage the economy in a better manner. So there has been failure on every front, in terms of the economy, in terms of uh, respect uh, for the rule of law, in terms of planning, there has been failure on every part. There is no infrastructure that, uh, that is attributable uh, to UPND. The states managed uh, the economy fairly, but that is uh, something that obviously uh, the UPND members and some section of society would would like to differ with. As they feel that uh, there was a lot of uh, misappropriation of funds under the patriotic front, and this is why Zambia is in this mess currently. Allow me to deal with this issue of misappropriation of funds. They is nowhere in the audits of this country that suggests that there was misappropriation of funds. Or let me put it this way, that funds were stolen from any ministry. There is nowhere. The UPND, when they came in, they were of the view that Zambia's total debt was $27 billion. When the Minister of Finance, Mr. Msokotwane, was told the debt that Zambia has is $11.8 million. Mm -hmm. He couldn't believe it because they had over-exaggerated the debt that Zambia had. And now, if you notice, when they are saying that you over-borrowed, they are no longer mentioning the figure. When they thought it was $27 billion, they were busy singing about $27 billion. Now that they have established that it's about $11.8 million, $9.8 billion, which was accumulated in the time of the uh, PF government, uh, an extrapolation of $1 million every year, makes it a reasonable amount because for themselves, they are less than three years in government, they have borrowed more than $3 billion. Mm -hmm. They can't say that we borrowed more than they did because if on a quantum merit basis, we are borrowing at the same rate, mm -hmm. except for them, even this time around, they are borrowing, uh, look at this particular example that the president gave to say, we are borrowing $400 million more from IMF. They are going to give us $400 million more. That $400 million more, we had expected that they would move a motion in Parliament. We need to borrow. We ask for permission to borrow $400 million more. And then par Parliament would give that go-ahead, and they would apply for it. They didn't do, do that. All they have done is come and announce, uh, we are good. 
We have borrowed much more. They are taking the praise. They want to be appreciated for borrowing more. And they want uh, PF to be crucified for the same kind of borrowing that they are doing. So you see the nature of the hypocrisy that is there. Let them tell us how much did PF borrow. What did they expend it on? People can see what PF expended that money on. The three billion dollars that they have borrowed, what that have they expended on? They can't even argue to say, no, we have been repaying the debt. They have said, this debt that we have, we are going to postpone the payment of this debt. And I've gotten into negotiations, mm -hmm. meaning that the UPND has not paid any debt that has been borrowed, uh, uh, that, that, that had accrued to Zambia, but they have borrowed even much more. They are not being choked by this debt because it is not being paid. It, uh, the, they are negotiating to have it paid at a future date. So they can't say we are in this situation because of this debt. Right. They can't say that. But they really uh, pry on people, taking advantage of uh, people's ignorance, to talk about um, terminologies that they think people will not understand. They, they, they pry on people's ignorance to sell a story that PF overborrowed. We are struggling to pay when there is no obligation currently for them to pay and they are borrowing at a much higher rate than what PF did. Right. Council, we are being warned of time. I ask you to give us your concluding remarks. My concluding remarks would be this. This time that we are in this situation, mm -hmm. It is prudent that the current government allows the Zambian people, and it is not even a favor, that Zambians should be exercising their freedom of expression, their freedom of association. It is not a favor that this government should practice the rule of law, actually, not presumptively. It is not far from fate that we could follow our constitution in the manner that this country was established to, to, to observe the rights of the people. We can't be taken back to the colonial days. We can't be taken back to a place where people can't exercise their rights, allow people to exercise their rights. And as they are exercising these rights, improve their livelihoods like you promised you would. Don't take us back to, uh, to, to a place where, or don't take us to a place where People no longer can afford a loaf of bread. They can't afford a bag of milly meal. You can't make it like that. You have to comply and do what you promised the people. You said fuel would be cheap. Make it cheap. You said fertilizer would be cheap. Make it cheap. You said the dollar would, uh, uh, the quarter would, uh, would, would gain. Make the quarter gain against the dollar. You promised all these good things that you said we could have. Let us have them. Stop concentrating on persecuting and prosecuting people. And let the country develop. Let the people be free to exercise their rights. Let the economy improve. That is the word that I, I would conclude with. All right. Council, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today on the platform. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Lovisa. All right, our dear viewer, we come to the end of uh, today's uh, program. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, joining me on set was renowned Lusaka lawyer, Makebi Zulu, as we were discussing the police.